Hello, so? Me escuto? Everyone heard? Uh, heard me? That's your presentation, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, we now have uh, 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 Laís Alves from University of Brasilia. So, hi everyone. Uh, good after afternoon. My name is Laís. I'm from University of Brasilia and I'm a PhD student in physics. And my talk here will be really brief because uh, I only have 20 minutes. Actually, 15 minutes. 15 plus five. Yeah. Okay. We are okay with time. And it's about time series forecasting. So I will be focusing here on uh, more about the methodology that is the Eco-State Networks and the Tekens Theorem. So my talk here, I will give you a brief introduction and then dive deeper into the Takin theorem and then I will talk about the echo state networks and then I will give a brief conclusion on this. So, um, it's possible to have powerful forecasts using artificial neural networks and you don't need to know the underlying equations of your system. You only need to have the past data of your, uh, the past data. And here is a image that I find really interesting that, because it shows how it's possible to forecast the impossible. And people usually think that it's impossible to make money trying to forecast financial systems. But this image here shows the opposite. Just using a simple neural network. And this is an image from my supervisor's uh, article. It's the last article he submitted. And here he shows that he could turn one hell into four reais and a half in only 700 days of open market. This was made because we just not used only neural networks, but we also used a theory of nonlinear dynamics. And this, is, this uh, was possible uh, in the future contracts Ibovespa time series. So we, uh, we, how can I say? Uh, I forgot the word, but this is possible because of the inefficiency of the Brazilian stock markets on the future uh, stock markets of the Ibovespa. And on the other hand, we have the Takins theorem. And it's a powerful theorem. I don't know if uh, have anyone here have already heard about this, this theorem. Please can raise the, your hands. OK, three. Only four people, okay. And this is a powerful one because it enables you to have access on other dynamical variables of your system uh, through only one dimensional measurement. Imagine that you have just an X measurement of the system. This is a state space uh, reconstruction, a state space a representation of the Lorentz systems. And with only the X measurement, you can get access to the Z and the Y measurements. And all, all of this may look like uh, an alchemist, alchemism uh, magic, but it is all uh, proof. You have proofs of how this works. So I want to... Uh, dive a little bit deeper on this. And for that, I want to explain to you a little bit about the, the stacking theorem. But first, I need to, uh, I will use an example here. I will use the Lorentz system equations. And I used it because, first of all, it's a toy model. It is widely studied. And 
also because it kind of resembles some of the compact models that you have on the disease uh, propagations uh, modeling. So here we have three equations. This is a ODE system. It's not a PDE in the sense that you, your variables only depends on the time. And these are the parameters where these systems uh, exhibit chaos. That is, uh, chaos usually is unpredictable. You have a, a behavior that is unpredictable in some sense, because you actually can't predict in the short term. And I will show that you can go even further. You can forecast uh, and you can replicate the climates of your system. So here is the state space representation. And this is simple. Uh, you have your x, y, and z, your variables. And you plot, for each time, you plot uh, the, the point here for x, y, and z of t1, and then you do a subsequent, uh, and, uh, the subsequent point of t2, you plot it again, and you go plotting. And when you plot, you get this beautiful trajectory. This is known as the Lorentz butterfly. And it's from here where it came the butterfly effect that some of you may have heard already. And when you project the x axis, the trajectory on the x axis, you get this uh, measurement, this x of t measurement. And you can see that it's chaotic because it never actually truly repeats, uh, repeats itself. And here is the Tuckins embedding theorem. I will not explain this too much because I'm short in time, but um, here is a more digestible form. You, for the right tau, and for enough dimensions, you can make vectors that work like an embedding dimension. Uh, so when you choose, you can uh, construct vectors and using these vectors, you can try to replicate the attractors of your system. Here are the true measurements. And the, the axis in here is this delayed vectors. And for this, I, I would like to show you a GIF. So you can, give, uh, can have a better uh, sense of what I'm speaking. Uh, this is the original state space construction. When you plot into the state space the points uh, of your x, y, and z of t, you get this beautiful trajectory. And the projections on the axis are the measurements you get. And here's another gift just for giving you an insight. So for each t, for each time, when you plot it onto the manifold, you get these trajectories. And you have infinite, uh, infinite trajectories for each initial point that you get, that you solve for your system. And the Tuckins vectors, they are nothing more than just x, for example. You, you get a, a measurement, and then you displace it by a tau. And using this, time series here, this displaced time series, you plot the, the new attractor using this lagged time series. And Tuckins theorem says that you can replicate your attractor, and this embedded topology that you have here, this new, this new state space representation, it, is, it contains the same properties of the, the same topology of the original attractor. And this, this is very powerful. Can you feel this? I, I get sometimes uh, with high feeling the, the skin.
is t minus tau. It's a displacement of tau. Tau is the time lag of a time series. You can choose, you can choose a tau for your, for your, your packing vectors, for your reconstruction vectors. Sorry? So it's the choice of tau is heuristic. You can, I will talk about it uh, in a second. So using this lag series of one only measurement, imagine that you are modeling your, your disease there. You have just a number of people who got sick per day, for example. And you want to give a better, have a better forecast of it. You can use an embedding or a displaced, uh, displaced measurements to try to embed the true attractor of your systems. So this can improve your forecasts. So, and what is so powerful with the Tuckin theorem is that it says that doing a good embedding, you conservates the topology. When we say that, it, uh, that these embedded dynamics are diffeomorphic, uh, diffeomorphic, we are saying that it has the same topology. So your Lyapunov exponents, for example, it is conserved. The dimension of your topology is conserved. Not the geometry, OK, but the topology. And that's why the, it looks like different because the geometry is not uh, conserved, but the, the topology it is. And this is very power, powerful. Because, sorry? This, this is what it's... Why? Because it's, it's a need... Um, in Tuckin's theorem, it's a needed, this is needed. You need to be diffeomorphic on your embeddings. It's a, how can I say? A so it's the same to geometry as well? No, it's not the no. geometry, but a geometry would be isomorphic, actually. Yes. It would mean that the lengths are conserved, but length is not conserved. It's still a diffeomorphism. Yes, diffeomorphism in the sense of the mapping. You have a mapping that, it, that has a, an inverse. You can map in and map. You have, uh, it's a inv you, you have a function that has its inverse. Okay. So, 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 so diffeomorphism does not uh, imply that the length is conserved, the, length, uh, the, the metric is conserved, the metric relation. So, uh, you can have a distortion with the diffeomorphism. Not the same as an isomorphism. Yeah. So this is one of the methods for choosing appropriate time lag. You can use the mutual information of your time series. So you can choose, for example, the first minima. Or you can choose the second minima. This is heuristic. Or you can even choose the first maxima, depending on what you want to do. If you want to maximize mutual information, or if you want to have the minimal mutual information on the, the, between the series. And I will not try to get so deep in here. And for the dimension, you, can, uh, you have two main methods that you can use. You can use Faustner's neighbors. So choosing an appropriate tau, you start to increase your dimension until you unfold. And then you see the percentage of Faustner's neighbors. And you, it usually drops. But uh, you have some downsides using it. And the choice of these three shoots until it, uh, it drops is also heuristic. And you also have the correlation dimension. And the correlation dimension, the grassberg procaccia dimension, it is a dimension of the attractor. And it can be shown that uh, usually you can embed your dynamics using not the full dimension of your system, but the dimension of your attractors. 
So the, the correlation dimension is also, uh, can also be used to, to do the embedding. And there is, of course, some caveats to be aware of because you can use this methodology to uh, work with uh, theoretical models, but you can also try to embed uh, real time data. And real data, it's really tricky because you have noise, you may have limited length, variation on the sampling, because for Taken theorem, you need the sampling to be homogeneous. You need to, to have a delta t uh, constant. But, but there's a, a work that also showed that depending on the, the case, when you have interval spikings, you can also apply the Takens theorem. And you also can have, and perhaps the worst here, the non-stationarity. Because if you apply the Takens theorem with a data that is non-stationary, then you may end up with a steel of multiple attractors. So you need to be aware of this and uh, do, do it in chunks of your data, and et cetera. And regarding noise, you must to do uh, noise reduction. You use, need to use noise reduction methods, right? So into the echo states now x-state networks. This is the same system that I've showed earlier, the Lorentz. And the echo-state, uh, it is possible uh, use an echo-state to do short-term forecasts. This is unseen data. I trained the echo-state and then applied to this data. And it was pretty good. It had an, a perfect uh, a perfect accuracy here, but as soon as the, the, the system it went to other attractor, it, uh, the, the prediction it runs out. And that's why we say that a chaotic series is unpredictable in the long run. But what is interesting here is that even though we are not able to do the whole predictions, we are still able to reproduce the climate of the system. And the climate of the system being this topology in the sense that uh, this prediction here in blue, it still has the same Lyapunov exponents, which is a measure of chaos, and the same uh, correlation dimension than the, the true signal. And this is very important because uh, because I will say this, I, I will talk about this a little bit more in a second. So I'm not getting to the details on how these things works and on the workflow, but usually what, what makes EchoState so powerful is that they resemble the Takens theorem. It's when you calculate the hidden states of your network, uh, you are doing kind of a, an embedding, a Takens embedding. And because of Takens theorem is that the echo state works. And <clears throat> here are some of the reservoir activation of these hidden states that, you, that the echo state uh, it gets and collects. And I will pass this also because of the time. And here are some advantage of the echo states. First of all, uh, it is the training, it's a lot more faster than the training of a recurrent neural network. Actually, the training phase of an echo state, it's usually just a time, a time step. Uh, it's only an iteration. You don't do multiple iterations because normally when you, one, one is using a uh, recurrent neural network or an LSTM, it needs to do a lot of uh, iterations until it reaches a minimum, for example, in the error. And here in the echo states, you don't need to do this. You only need to, for example, when you have a, a, the last layer, when you, on, when you only have one last layer on your uh, neural network, you only need to do an inverse 
it's a linear problem. You have, for example, uh, y equals mx in the matrix form, and then you just inverse that, and then you calculate your weights. So it's faster. They are well suited for chaotic systems, mainly because of the Takens theorem. And they are able to learn in the short term and the long term correlations of your system. Uh, now the disadvantages of the echo state is that the selection of the parameters, uh, they are mostly on trial and, and error. You need to search, you need to do grid search, for example, to, uh, to, to reach a, a, a good trained echo state. And the limited size of the reservoir, it's also a downside because it's uh, dependent on your computer's memory capacity. My computer, for example, has eight gigabytes. And the, the bigger reservoir that I can run, it's one of uh, roughly 7,000 by 7,000. So it's, it's small because usually you can see there are reservoirs of uh, 15 up and more than 15. So in concluding, so what does the Takens embedding have to do with the echo state networks? And why have I talked to you about the two of them? It's because usually today you see a lot of scientists just using machine learning without the, the theorem, without a proper methodology, without a proper theory beforehand, before applying a machine learning technique. And this is the problems concerning this uh, machine learning hype that we have today. We must know how to treat the underlying system. We must know if this underlying system, for example, is a deterministic one. Or if it is not, how to approach it, right? And in the case of uh, deterministic systems, uh, the echo state is a good call, but, and only when, you have the proper knowledge on the parameters concerning your systems. For example, you can calculate the correlation dimension that I've spoke earlier and the Lyapunov exponents and of the original system and uh, calculate, for example, the same for the, for the predictions here and see if they match. If they match, then you did a proper uh, application of the X state, for example, of a neural network. If they don't, you have failed. And people often, uh, they forget to, to do this thing, to, to make this comparison, to see the underlying system. So in concluding, uh, we must to, to look on both of, the, of these methodologies. We need to use machine learning together with nonlinear uh, dynamics theory. So here is some bibliography. The slides will be uh, will be posted on the website. So these are uh, the main ones, but uh, that I used here. But uh, if you want to dive deeper on nonlinear dynamics, I recommend the the book of Hilborn on chaos and nonlinear dynamics. And uh, in, each, in the end of each chapter, you have uh, a whole list of articles that re he relates to. And it's really good for, for diving deeper in the nonlinear non -linear dynamics. So thank you. Thank you. We have time for some, some questions. Yes. Why inefficient? Because I, I consider the, the markets, I, I have no idea of markets. I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> I make no money. But uh, I always thought that there are some rules there, and then those rules can be learned by some of these uh, machine learning mm -hmm. programs, and then you, you can predict some. 
country, no? Perfectly, not making money. Well, uh, so it's inefficient in the sense that you do not have that uh, perfect, uh, perfect market hypothesis. It's, uh, and it's mainly because it's a, a future contract uh, time series. It's not the actual time series. That's the, the jump of the cat. <laughs> because it's a future contract time series. That's why you can still try to make some money from it. And in just a note, uh, it's this, that, uh, that graphic there. This, uh, the results, we not used only one time series. We used uh, 20 time series from uh, other countries, countries uh, currencies exchanges, for example, and other uh, markets from other countries. And then we first, we oh, ran future, market. future, yeah, we used also the future market, but the, the current market as well. We used 20 series. And, th and then we performed a PCA analysis, a principal component, component anal analysis. So only there we applied the, the, the neural networks. So you see that uh, there is uh, a study. You, you, we chose the proper time series. It wasn't a blind application of a neural network. So, any more questions? More questions? I have so, I'm having trouble picturing, so you gave a good example of stock market kind of data or futures data, but do you have a feel for what other kinds of systems or data this concept could be most useful for? For any data that resembles deterministic behavior, we can try to use this. And how and would you tell? Just trying. We need to try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just a quick question. The tax experience, you, you need generally generosity, so it's not, uh, it's not ready for all systems, it's just generically yes. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. How you avoid the residual sets? The what? The, 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 the complement of the generality is residual sets, so you can, you can have a system that is always in this residual set of Tuckens theorem. Yes. How do you avoid that? You, you just mentioned the equilibrium, isn't it? That's, mm -hmm. that's yes. not generic. So how you avoid the, the so residuals? In this, uh, the data that it's not on the equilibrium, and it's not a dissipative system, for example, uh, this is, unfortunately, we cannot apply the Takins embedding theorem. But we can still try to apply uh, neural networks. And my, my PhD is not only on echo states and on Takins theorem. This, is, this was only a glimpse on my PhD research. I also want to apply LSTMs because LSTMs, on the other hand, they, they show to be, they show to be uh, a good application for systems where you do not have a deterministic, a kind of deterministic uh, behavior, intrinsically behavior that is deterministic. They, they can be applied, for example, for a bunch of uh, different uh, applications such as the natural language processing, for example. And we can see that this is not totally deterministic, the, the language, the, the words that get in sequence. And so in my PhD, I also want to, to see how the LSTMs, uh, they relate to the other, to this, this, this uh, other systems where I cannot apply the tokens embedding. So, okay, thank you again. Thank you. So now we have a real break, a coffee break of 30 minutes. <laughs> Water.